Shanghai GDG is a very interesting、uh, developer community. I'm glad somebody has asked this question. I mean, this is where the magic happens. This is primarily a question and answer show. So, if any of you out there would like to ask questions. Hello, I'm Eric Gilmore, technical writer with the Google Drive SDK, and here with me today is Claudio Carabino. Hi, Claudio is going to talk to us a little bit about、uh, an application that he's discovered recently, and we're going to review it. Cool.、Uh, thank you, Eric.、Um, today we're going to talk about Neutron Drive, which is a web editor that uses Google Drive for storage, that is available on the Chrome Web Store. Uh, this、um, web editor is targeted to developers,、um, and it has support for many different programming languages. But, I mean, what's cool is that you store your files on the cloud, so that you can edit those files whenever you are、uh, from any computers, and and your files are always there, updated.、Mm -hmm. um, Let's show it so we can talk over it while we、uh, see all the features. And obviously, we're going to show all the features. And we also found some room for improvement. And the goal of this session, obviously, is to、uh, tell developers out there how、uh, to improve their applications and how to、uh, provide their users with the best experience.、Mm -hmm. So nothing major for Neutron Drive. It's actually a very good、uh, application. But we still have some minor、uh, suggestions. Mm -hmm. uh, let's see how to get started.、Um, Eric, can you can you start showing from like where do you get Neutron Drive? Okay, well maybe we should start right in the Chrome Web Store.、Mm -hmm. um, we can get a drive collection here in the Chrome Web Store and see only apps that.、Uh, mm -hmm. So there's a, a collection of drive applications. You can reach it by going to the、uh, collections item in the left sidebar. And then selecting Google Drive,、um, so you can see all the applications that integrate with Google Drive, and、um, uh, Neutron Drive is one of those. I would、But、just I would point out that it also works just to put Drive in the search box. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and obviously you can also search for、let's、the application. Let's search. So we know these applications. Let's search for Neutron Drive. There it is. Okay, now Claudio, should we go ahead and?、Uh, well, if you click on it, we will see what the what the Um, application does so、oh、this、yeah. is their promotional、uh, page. You have screenshots, you have a video, you have the features, and even more important for many users is that you have reviews. So you can see、um, what people think about this application, if it has、uh, good features or not, and the the stars, which is the rating, and so on. As I said,、um, there are many many users using this app already. It's like. Uh, thousands of users using Neutron Drive already. You know what I noticed about this that I like, Claudio, is that there's actually change log documentation、mm -hmm. here that you can look at. So I,、um, I assume if you wanted to upgrade Neutron Drive, or if you were waiting for a particular feature or fix,、mm -hmm. you could find out about it right here. Cool. And、mm -hmm. they al also have、uh, a website, which is a、uh, Neutron-Drive.AppSupport.com,、uh, where you can also see all the all the information, and where also you can、uh, start if you don't want to start from the Chrome Web Store. Right. So, how do we install Neutron Drive? Let's go ahead and pull the trigger and say "Add to Chrome."、Mm -hmm. uh, there's a little bit of dissonance there, isn't it? We're actually adding this to Drive, but、mm -hmm. let's. So, do you do you need Chrome to use this? I don't think you do need. No, a Chrome you don't、browser. need Chrome. We made this kind of special、uh, deal for for Drive applications. You can install Drive applications、um, from inside any browser, and obviously, if you're inside Chrome. When you install an app, it will also show up in the Chrome New Tab page. But if you're not in Chrome, let's say you're using、uh, Mozilla Firefox or Internet Explorer, you will still install the application on your Drive account. But obviously, there is no New Tab page as、uh, that we are aware of, so、uh, there's there will be no link to it in there. Right, right. That's the main difference, isn't it? Yeah. Okay, let's click Add. And as you said, cute icon. A very cute icon. With some pretty severe canines shows up <laughs> on my、uh, new tab page. I'll go ahead and click that. Now I think、mm -hmm. we're at one of our, our first points we'd like to discuss、uh, in terms of places that Neutron、mm -hmm. Drive might be able to improve. Yeah. So、um, as all Drive applications, the first time you start the application, it will ask for access、um, to be able to read and write resources according to the application needs. So every time you start a new application, every time you install an application, you have to carefully read what the application wants to do with your files, 
and grant access or not according to your needs. Mm -hmm. So if we read what Neutron Drive wants, what, what do we find? Well, it's a fairly long list and we can mm -hmm. expand each one of these items. It wants to view my basic account information. Mm -hmm. That's fairly standard. I think it'll need that. Mm -hmm. It wants to add itself to Google Drive. Mm -hmm. uh, I have no quarrel with that at all. It's going to appear in my uh, Open With and Create menus. Which is what we want. Right. Google Drive integration. That's mm -hmm. terrific. View and manage the files and documents in my Google Drive. Mm -hmm. Now, this is interesting because just a couple bullets down, we have view and manage Google Drive files that you have opened or created with this app. Yeah. Um, this is something uh, we think um, Neutron Drive should change. So when you write an application that integrates with Google Drive, you, as a developer, can select among many different scopes your application uh, wants to be able to access to. Um, the, there is a, a wide scope, which is a full scope, which is the first one you read. So uh, be able to manage all the files on your Google Drive. So when you give access to an application to all your files with that scope, you're saying that the application can read and write all the files you have in Google Drive. My drive is your drive, basically. Yes, this is reasonable, this is legit if the application has a, a legitimate need for it. So if, let's say, the application wants to uh, list all your files, the application is a file manager, it definitely needs to be able to read and write all your files. Okay. If the application is something else that doesn't need that, you might want to restrict the access only to the files that the application itself created. In this case, uh, Neutron Drive uh, is an editor that allows you to list all your files in Drive. So they need the wider access. They need full access. But the wider access also includes, so if you have that, you can also do everything you can also do with the narrow scope. Mm -hmm. So if you request the first one, you don't need to also request the second one. Right, And, and, and this can be confusing for developers, right? Yes. Or for users. I, I think uh, it might very well confuse a user who was studying this closely. And it really just it will clean up the screen a little bit to remove that one item. And, yeah. and, and you know, this dialogue can be a bit scary because obviously the user has to give access to his own resources and they have to be careful. And the bigger the message, the bigger the list of things the application can do, the scarier it is. Exactly. So as a developer, you want it to be as concise as possible. This is something that we promote as a best practice in our mm -hmm. uh, Drive SDK documentation too. Do you mind if I click over to that for a second, sure, Claudio? Sure, let's show it. Um, here in our Drive SDK, under the section for building Drive web apps, we give some authorization guidance, including how to choose auth scopes for your app. And uh, we list the scopes that are available and give you some details. And we really do, again, oh, and we also have the, a recent video with yeah. Ali Afshar as starring. Yeah, we also covered this in a recent uh, recording of Google Developers Live. So if you want to read the page, oh, it's pretty short, so you can actually read it. But if you want, uh, and you can also watch this video. And Ali Afshar, one of our teammates, uh, will go through each of the available scopes and explain when you should use it. And you know, to quote a great technical writer, mm -hmm. users more readily grant access to limited, clearly described scopes. What a great technical writer. <laughs> Thank yeah. you, Claudio. Anyway. Okay. So we also found another minor thing in this page, right? If you click on, if you select no, if you don't want to ah, grant access to the application. That's right. Let's go see. The user can say, no, I don't want to. And what should happen is that if you say no to the application, you should go back to the previous page. You should go back to some other page that says, well, you didn't grant access, so there's nothing we can do. Mm -hmm. Some or applications will pop up a, a little dialogue saying, you might want to reconsider. We're yeah, quite this harmless. This is why we want this. Yeah. This is why you should give us access. This is what you're going to miss if uh, you don't give us access. And instead, what happens here, if you click, you just get back to the same page. Right. So the user has to close the browser to get rid of this message. And that's not what you want Exactly. <laughs> as an application so, developer. But we want to install Neutron Drive. It's a nice application, so let's say we grant access to it. All right. Access is allowed. And Neutron Drive is opened in a new tab. Perfect. And what do we see? Well, here's the list of all my files, as promised. Mm -hmm. I gave it uh, access, as we just mentioned. Mm -hmm. And here they all are. And also, I am in, um, apparently, I am creating a new file. Mm -hmm. I'm in a new file to create. Yeah. Let's create a new file. 
Okay. Put some interesting content. Okay, More interesting content. How's that? Yes, I mean, <laughs> you're a tech writer, you know how to produce that interesting content. Oh, I have to be alone in a cloister or a dark room. Oh, you know, yeah. Feeling uh, my angst. Okay, now <laughs> let's save it. <laughs> All right. So, one of the cool features about um, Neutron Drive is that it auto saves documents you're editing. But this is a totally new file, so you can also uh, click on the Force Save button to save all the open files. Done. I did not name it, however. Oh, we, we didn't create one from, from scratch. So, this is actually uh, another small thing that the application can fix. So, the user is there and believes that he's already editing a file while the user is not because we didn't create any file. So we should make it clear that, um, I, I, I mean, the application says something like you should open a file or create a new one before you can do anything. But it still allows users to type mm -hmm. and delete that message and write the content. And maybe it's too late when they realize that the application is not actually saving. Now, Claudio, you're more uh, familiar with this app than I am at this point. How, how do I get started creating a file? Um, Let's uh, let's say you want to create a file. You can also show the uh, drive integration from the drive UI. Oh, okay. Let's come so over here. Uh, you probably have to refresh the page oh, just, uh, so the application gets installed. Sorry, Claudio. You're right. And then once the application is installed, we can open files from it or create new files from it. More? No Should apps. Be there? It's not. Should I? Yeah. Completely. Okay, just reopen. Okay. And still thinking. Yeah, we're having some internet internet access issues in here. Is it possible that it isn't integrated? It's for gonna be installed. Right? So let's go back to the app and show right. and show what you can do with the app. So let's say let's say uh, first of all I want to show you what you can do with this app. So uh, this application supports um, opening from there. So let's say you want to open a file from there. Aha. Uh -huh. So you have the list of files, but you also have a picker. So with the picker, what you see is the complete list of files um, in, in your application. These can be fine, but um, this dialog lists all the files you have in Drive, not just the supported ones. So in your drive, there might be text files that this application can open, but you know, there can also be some files your application doesn't know what to do with them. So I think a better user experience would be to only list those files the application knows it can open. Right. So what happens if you want to open one? Well, let's try this. How about Terry or JPG? OK, which is clearly an image. Let's see what we get. My text editor is apparently trying to open that image file. Yeah. Hmm. But it, as we said, uh, you're going to get a dialog that says, this file isn't supported. So you have two options. Uh, open it in Google Docs or try to open it in Neutron Drive. This can, be, this can be the expected behavior from this app. I'm not sure this is a best user experience, though, because uh, you definitely know, you as a developer, Neutron Drive definitely knows that this, this file cannot be opened. Right. So I would probably just filter that list from the picker dialog and show only the files we know the application can open. Do you want to take a quick look at our picker code? Yes, sample? how do we do that with the picker? OK. Let's come down here to integrate with the drive UI, and we'll look at a topic about opening files, which mm -hmm. is essentially what we do with the picker. Down here, there's a familiar looking screen, the mm -hmm. one we were just looking at, and a sample to show how you might open that uh, within a browser. Here, I wish mm -hmm. we had lines. Uh, line numbers and things to show you, but we will highlight this line. Mm -hmm. Correct me if I'm wrong, Claudia, but I think this is the key to filtering MIME types. It is. So the Picker API is a simple JavaScript API that you can embed in your application. And uh, with that, you can uh, open these dialogs you've seen to open files, to save files, and to get images, to get all the files. But you can also filter to some specific MIME types. And this is what I think Neutron Drive should do. They should list the kind, the uh, file types they can support, and only show them. Also, because this is what the application does when you open a file from the Drive UI. So, it is not consistent. Uh, what what the user can do from the Drive UI, where they can only open a file, a text file, and what 
uh, a user can do from inside um, the application itself, from the peer dialog. Right. So I think that it is not bad, but it has to be consistent. Sure. By the way, this example was for an image editor, so it only does PNGs, JPEGs, and mm -hmm. JPEGs. Logical enough. Um, there is also, let's see, what else are we show? Oh, if you uh, go and open the menus, you will see that you have uh, the, the top menus. Uh, you will see that there are some options to um, select what type, what type of file highlighting we want, and so on. Because this application is very is a very powerful text editor. So if you want to, you can have syntax highlighting for different uh, file types. So if you go to the menu and select uh, editor mode, you will see that there are many um, programming languages supported. And for each of them, you get a syntax highlighting, which is very useful for, uh, as a developer. If not, you will only get um, a standard text file. Oh, this really is terrific. Everything under the sun is in here. Yeah. From there, uh, if you close this, from the same menu, you can also create a new file, which is what we wanted to do before, right? Okay. So you open the same menu, and there is a new file option. Which menu? I'm sorry. That ahead. menu. By the way, can I uh, can I uh, do YAML highlighting? I may even have a YAML file. Okay, that yeah. is a pair file setting. So you select that every time you open a file or create a file. So the second okay. option in this menu is a new file. When you do that, you get a dialog, and you have to specify a name. Mm -hmm. It might be easy to just specify a name and not an extension, which is what we're going to do. Oh, right? correct. Sorry. I don't want to yeah. uh, cause any difficulties for your so, test. Um, most users will open this dialog and specify a file name, a title, but not a, an extension, mm -hmm. assuming that the application will know how to open this file. right? But apparently, Nugent Drive uh, detects what files it can open by checking the extension instead of the MIME type. Or maybe the MIME type is not set when we created a file. And so even if we created a file with Neutron Drive, when we try to open it back, which is what is happening right now, Neutron Drive believes that the file cannot be opened. Right. Mm -hmm. And actually, if you click on uh, try to open it anyway, it will work properly. Because this is a text file. so. Mm -hmm. um, New to drive is capable of opening it. So let's add something and save. Uh, with Newton Drive, you can have multiple files open at the same time with tabs. So if you want, you can uh, create a new file, open a file from your file list, and so on, and save. We save all of them at the same time when when you work on them. Mm -hmm. um, and when you save a file on Google Drive we save multiple revisions. So we keep track of the changes you make to the document, and we call them revisions. At any time, uh, from inside Neutron Drive, you can also see the list of re available revisions and go back in time and go back to one of those and see what happened since then and so on. So let's say you saved, and from the same menu, which is the main menu, the main Neutron Drive menu, you get a revision, a revision history dialog. Okay. And this will show a list, multiple changes we made to the document. For each of them, we can see what was in that file, in that version of the file. And if we want to go back in time, we can just revert to that revision. Mm -hmm. Do you want to open just one of those, just to see? Want to revert back before Let's I... Let's open it first. Let's see what happened. Let's uh, view, view a revision first. So here, here's this is the latest. The one, latest. Right? Let's go back. So and you got the revision history. And it's pretty remarkable that the, this is you know th some nonsense that I typed in the past five minutes, and there are five revisions here. Yeah. So if you go and see and click on view uh, revision, you will see what the content was at that time. And if you like it, and it, if this is what you were looking for, you can revert to it and go back to that version of the file. Ooh. Or not. Hang on. Let's try one more time. Or do you want to just try reverting, excuse me, straight from that menu? Uh, should we the same? We can try. That's the one I was trying to get. I am sure I want to revert, even without looking at it. Hmm. OK. See, see, there are some uh, minor UI glitches that we would like this application to, to fix. So you try to revert to revision. and. You don't know if that is working or not. I mean, 
you click on revert and you don't get any visual confirmation. Okay, maybe things like that. Small things that can make this application even better. Okay, another attempt just worked, Claudio. Yeah. So okay. things like that will make the experience better. If uh, some something fails, they should be able to catch it, show a proper error message like they do, but maybe in a more friendly way. Mm -hmm. Small things, right? Well, and this is a, a, a nice to have feature. I think we were demonstrating it to show what a great uh, integration they've done with our revisions yeah. collection. That's oh, yeah. We would just urge the developers on. on if this developers product. want to learn about revision, where should they go? Aha. Uh -huh. well, we do again have a topic in the Google Drive SDK documentation that will get you up to speed on managing mm -hmm. revisions. Uh, it's brief, short, and sweet, mm -hmm. but it links you into the details that you need. Oh, my word. <laughs> That's not good. Let's find See, those details here. <laughs> Is it, it's happening to us too today. Yeah. What a great day. It's the it's Monday. phase of the moon or something. Yeah. But <laughs> here are the details right here. Cool. So um, this is one of the things you can do with the Drive SDK. Uh, you can manage revisions uh, as well as files. So anytime programmatically, as you can do from the UI, you can also um, manage the content of previous revisions. Mm -hmm. Cool. Um, there are some other uh, nice features in, in Neutron Drive. Uh, we're not going uh, through them through all of them today. But remember, this, um, uh, there is, if, let's say, if you go to the preference menu and the preference option in the menu, there's some other preference you can set uh, that might be interesting for developers. So if you want to uh, you want to use tabs, font size, what kind of editor you want to use, and so on. And also, it supports um, keyboard shortcuts. Right. So you know, fast developers usually use a lot of keyboard. So there's a lot of things you can do as a developer with Newton Drive. I think this is um, an amazing tool. If um, uh, you want to write code wherever you are, what mm -hmm. do you think? I, I would agree with that, and I think if you're an independent developer or a developer in a small company, it would, could work really well to use this uh, type of an editor and, and use Google Drive as your storage. I mean, this is a very easy revision uh, control history, revision control tool you can have for your source. Yeah. Obviously, there are tools that do this thing specifically, so there are. Um, revision control tools that you can use, and you, know, have, you probably need to set up a server and so on. But if you want something very easy to get started with an editor, this is probably uh, very good for you. And it comes with all the uh, bells and whistles uh, that Drive offers in terms of sharing cool. and uh, collaborative editing. And did we mention it's free? Oh, it's completely free. <laughs> yeah. Right. So cool. Um, with that, I think we covered Neutron Drive. Uh, we know Neutron Drive is active on Google+, and we are active as well. So we would love to hear your feedback, and we would love to hear feedback from Neutron Drive. And if you have any questions on uh, Drive development, how to integrate your apps with Drive, uh, you can uh, get in touch with us on Google+, or on Stack Overflow for technical questions. It will be very, very happy to help you. Right. In uh, fact, uh, should I show on the screen our, our please tag? Please do. Uh, we do have probably the most important page in the entire Drive SDK is here's how to ask us a question about Google Drive SDK. And you'll probably recognize some of those faces. <laughs> There's one of them right there. Yeah. Uh, let's see. We have Ali Afshar with 15,000 points, and I just got my first 30 the other day, but I'm just starting. Cool. OK. <laughs> and with that happy note, we're done for today. Um, thank you very much for watching us, and see you next time on Google Developers Live. Thank you. Bye-bye.